You know, while I was driving back from the theaters, having seen Top Gun Maverick, I felt like I'm flying a jet. Not speed wise, I was in the city speed limits, have to mention that. But you know, while changing the gear, I felt like I'm Tom Cruise in a jet. That's the feeling you get after watching the movie. And I have to tell you, that's a good feeling. Hello guys, I'm Nuna Prince and today we're talking about the latest Hollywood film, Top Gun Maverick. The sequel to the 1986 movie Top Gun, both starring Tom Cruise. This one is directed by Joseph Kosinki. This will be a non-spoiler review, so don't worry. Now, while watching this film, I was really happy that I saw the first one just a day before. Streamed it live actually on my second channel, do check it out. Because I felt to fully appreciate this film, you need to watch the first one. Not just to get all the references and callbacks from the previous film, but to understand what you're going in for. You have to remember, this is an aviation drama movie. It is a slow-paced drama, but if you're going in blind, just think it has Tom Cruise, it has fighter jets, and it will all be action packed just like a Mission Impossible film, action scene after every 15 minutes, no. It's not that. And if you go with that expectation, you will be disappointed. The flight scenes are definitely breathtaking, but most of it is a slow paced drama, which really works well because you are invested in the characters. Compared to the previous film, this film is actually building up to a grand climax, which really pays off. And thus it's more fast paced than the previous one. Now this film is a true sequel. It surpasses the first one in a very good way. It pays tribute to the first one. It's a love letter to it. The music, it gave me chills whenever it was playing. The way the film begins, the way it's treated, the ending, they have not let go the aesthetics of it. Coming to Tom Cruise, man, he made me emotional. There's literally no one like him in the business anymore. With his vision, doing his own stunts. Like there are so many moments you keep doubting. Is he really flying in this shot or this one is CG? And you keep guessing that throughout. And when is the last time we did that for a movie? Because we all know it's mostly CG. It's VFX. But in this film, we know a lot of stunts are done in reality. And many done by Tom Cruise himself. I'm sure they use CGI, VFX, to enhance the scenes. Not every actor can fly the plane. So definitely they use technology. But even those shots look real. And at the time of technology advancements, getting to see something so real, so authentic looking is a privilege. And there's actually a parallel to that in the film itself. That human pilots will be gone away. They will be taken over by technology, AI. And just like in the film, Tom Cruise is sticking to it. Even in reality, he's sticking to real stunts instead of using VFX. And that's the greatness of this guy. How far he's willing to go for his passion, for his art for cinema as i said before the music whenever it comes up it just hits you hard it makes you feel old i don't know why the flight scenes are so well done they are so good in the first movie there are moments you don't know what really happening in the air but here it's nothing like that the way they have shot them the sound design if you're watching the film in a good theater i saw it in dolby i could feel the jets cruising through the air the story and the characters are solid it makes you feel reminiscent of the past but with new energy this film takes a plot from the previous film ahead but not forcefully it feels very organic at no point in the film it feels like just to get money, they played on the nostalgia factor. Not at all. That's why I said it's a true sequel. And the stakes are high in this one. The characters are put in a situation where they have to fight back. It's not easy. In a way, it is a hero movie as we see in India, where he is the best, he can do anything. But even he has some constraints. He's also carrying emotional baggage. There's a whole character arc to him, which makes you satisfied by the end. Coming to the ending of the film, I have to get into some spoiler stuff. So if you haven't seen the movie, pause here, go watch it and come back. So in the climax, Maverick's plane gets shot down and we are like oh shit he died and we get a black screen and it feels like the movie is over but it's not we get back and we see he's alive and rooster comes back to save him and as the movie goes on from there i felt it became a little too much they got into some over the top territory there which until then they never did even in the first film it all felt very realistic now don't get me wrong i definitely enjoyed it it gave a happy ending to our characters but it did cross a line where it gets into the unbelievable category now there's one more way to look at it whenever i see this cut to black screen during or after the climax it feels like the story is ended there and if something is being followed it's an imagination or it's an happy ending an alternate ending i noticed that in badhaido movie also check out my review and it happens here also so you can either take it as the movie ended there and the next half is just imagination or an alternate happy ending or it was just a creative choice and whatever happened happened in reality it's for the audience to decide what ending they want but what do you think do i make any sense let me know that in the comments you can check out my video where i talk to foreign film critics and why they love triple r the indian epic film if you enjoyed this video hit the thumbs up share this video if you haven't subscribed yet do consider and i'll see you next time